Hello guys, thanks for subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell to stay updated and sharing with everybody that you know. Boy, oh boy, have I got a heartstring puller for you. This one tugs right at the heartstrings, this one gets you right there. This is not a mask. This is confidence. It's for getting out and working anywhere other than home. This is not a mask. This is solidarity. It's for opening the door to a friend and keeping the doors open to your favorite places. This is not a mask. This is a sign of love. <laughs> this is not a mask. It's a sign of love. This is not a mask. It's confidence. It's so we can keep our world open and our businesses open. Uh, no. It's a fucking mask. Okay? However you try and normalise it, I think you're going to struggle, especially longer term. Okay, it might be a bit of a fad and like this advert here, you can even get your personalised nappies too. Whoa! And I'm sure there's plenty of families out there still wanting to extend their virtue signalling far and wide, but... However you try and normalise this, you're going to struggle. These children, well, they don't look that happy, do they? When you're throwing two-year-olds off a plane for not wearing a mask, there's got to be question marks over that, right? Take a look at this still face experiment with a mother and her child, a baby, and let's see where the confidence and joy and happiness comes from there, shall we? In this still face experiment, what the mother did was she sits down and she's playing with her baby who's about a year of age. I need my girl. And then we ask the mother to not respond to the baby. The baby puts both hands up in front of her and says, what's happening here? They react with negative emotions. They turn away. They feel the stress of it. They actually may lose control of their posture because of the stress that they're experiencing. I'm here. I'm not going to bore you with the body language stats, but just know that what we say and how we say it forms small parts of our communication when it comes to our actual body language and micro expressions and how we communicate. Now imagine being a parent with a mask on and your child not being able to see most of your face, not being able to see this part of your face when it comes to communication. We're talking deep psychological underdevelopment, not just for children, not just for babies, but for humans, the way that we communicate, the way that we communicate with our friends. Teaching our children that they are superheroes for staying apart from their friends and putting a mask over their face so they are afraid to even talk to their friends, afraid of their friends because everybody is a danger. This is deep, profound, psychological, irreversible damage for us all. Not just for our children and their children, but look, at the risk of sounding a little cynical, all of this was meant to be temporary, was it not? And yet, it's being compounded into our psyches, this new terminology of the new normal. The WHO consistently telling us messages like, we are not going to return to any form of normality. Masks and everything like this are being sold to us to give us back our freedoms, and yet we are also being told that we will never get back to any form of normality. It reminds me a little bit like lockdown itself, right? Because the argument here, of course, is, well, it's for safety. It's for everybody's safety, right? So that's why we lock down. But have a look at the devastating effects that things like lockdown have done. On the face of it, when you listen to mainstream media, you might be told how many lives it saved, but are you being told how many lives that are being lost? through job losses, through suicide, through despair, through social isolation. No, we're not told that. Of course we're not. Just like we're not told the devastating long-term effects, especially for our children, of them staying apart from their friends and wearing a mask.
This is an article dated over two years ago. A killer flu outbreak is to blame for 42% spike in deaths in January after 64,000 people died. This was dated February 2018. I don't remember a couple of years ago masks being mandated. I don't remember lockdowns. I don't remember everything that we are facing, all the draconian measures that we're facing today. Do you? No. We got on with life and we dealt with it. And there was tragedy and there was death and there was all these things that are part of our lives and will continue to be part of our lives. And surely that's the question, isn't it? With these things continuing to be part of our lives, colds, flus, viruses, whatever it is, do we stay at home? Do we stop working? Do we stop living our lives? Or do we do our best to make the most of life and move forward? There will always be a price for trading freedom for safety, which again, you know, based on what we've spoken about today, you can understand why so many people are falling under the narrative of let's get past this to get our freedom back. But like I say, there will always be a price for trading freedom for our safety. So I'll ask that question again, because we can only answer it on an individual level when we look in the mirror. When we say to ourselves, do we actually take responsibility or do we become a victim of our circumstance? When we look in the mirror, what do we say to ourselves? Am I going to stay home today? Am I going to stop working? Am I going to allow this normal symptom that happens to lots of people? to devastate me, to keep me back, to hold me back, to manifest into something that it might not be. Am I going to do all that and stop living my life? Or am I going to take the opportunity, the gift that I've been given to look in the mirror and say, I ain't going to be a victim. I need to live my life. If you're in a place, it's on you if you want to help other people who might be more vulnerable than you, where you can give your time or whatever it may be to help these people. And there are people out there who do need our help. And that's on you. If you feel like you're in a place to do that, then that's on you, isn't it? But then to believe that by going out and living your life without putting a full armor suit on, whether it be a bloody mask or a full hazmat suit, to go out and believe that we are a virus, that we are a disease, Surely we can't live like that. How do we live like that? Is there life like that? I'm, I'm not sure. And for some time, I don't know about you, but for some time when you get into a bit of a psyche to think, well, are we a bloody virus? Are we a disease? Mother nature could flick us off this planet like it has done with other species within a moment if it wanted to, or she wanted to, however you want to refer to mother nature. Sure, but are we a disease? Are we a virus? It's funny, isn't it? When you get told stories long enough that get compounded and become quite profound in the psyche, how believable they can become. But are they true? Ta-ta.